There's something called PPI-induced SIBO. PPIs are proton pump inhibitors, right? Proton pump inhibitors reduce stomach acid production. It's used as a way of dealing with symptoms for people that get reflux, right? And so when you reduce stomach acid, you end up with SIBO because these microbes are going into the viable state. So when it comes to SIBO, I would assume if somebody's not on one of those drugs, part of fixing that would be to rebuild up stomach acid in a natural way. Yep. So let's talk about that and how we do that. And then also other players in the SIBO realm and what we can do to correct that if we have that condition. Yeah. So so two things you want to really address if you have SIBO. One is stomach acid. Um, and, and the things that really uh, suppress stomach acid production, of course, the medications we talked about, but let's say you're not taking the OTC PPIs, right? So these are the over-the-counter acid reducers. If you're not using that, if you're not using things like Pepto-Bismol all the time, or you're not using acid reducers or neutralizers all the time, uh, which a lot of people do, you know, and I think that's probably one of the most prevalent reasons for reduction in stomach acid. Uh, but let's say you're not using those. The other reasons for a reduction in stomach acid production are stress. Stress is actually one of the biggest reducers of stomach acid production. Uh, micronutrient deficiency, so magnesium is really important for inducing the production of hydrochloric acid, and also H. pylori infection. Helicobacter pylori infection in the, in, the, in the stomach is another way of reducing stomach acid production. So you may want to address helicobacter pylori issues, right? Um, and so, so that's one aspect of it. You need to start thinking about stomach acid. Uh, I would even say if you've had SIBO for a long time, you have bowel movement issues, you get a lot of bloating and all that, you want to consider even using uh, betaine HCL, which is a supplemental form of hydrochloric acid, right? I would use that with my food in order to help digest the food properly and also provide some hydrochloric acid protection uh, during the digestion process. Now, the stomach acid is one thing with SIBO. The second thing is, is bile. Bile salts produced by the liver are really important in maintaining low levels of microbial growth in the small intestine, especially during digestion, right? So a lot of people with SIBO, a very high percentage, about four or five times higher than non-SIBO people also have liver dysfunction, right? So if you have SIBO, you want to talk to your doctor about getting some liver function testing done and then supporting the liver. Some of the basic things you can do to support the liver are things like milk thistle, right? Milk thistle, uh, which is also known as silymarin, is really effective at supporting the liver. Uh, you also want to manage leaky gut. Most people with SIBO tend to have leaky gut. There's tons of videos on how you do that. We use uh, spore probiotics, prebiotics, a combination of that to manage leaky gut because leaky gut drives heavy dysfunction in the liver. And, and if you're not producing enough bile acids, you may also supplement with that. There's a product called ox bile, which is a bile acid supplement, which you can utilize that can, that can take the place of uh, the lack of production of your own bile acids until you get your liver functioning properly. Have you heard of Dr. William Davis's SIBO yogurt? And I have, If yeah. you have, have you tried it? I have. Uh, I, I actually have. He sent me some of his uh, uh, ruteri. So he uses a lactobacillus ruteri, uh, which is the, the key organism in the yogurt. He also has a, uh, a probiotic uh, with a with high amount of that ruteri. And he also provided me once uh, instructions on how do you use that probiotic to make the yogurt. Um, I think it's a fantastic product. I think it's, it's uh, great for the system. Um, I think it, it can help with SIBO because it can compete against some of those overgrown organisms. And I think part of it is also it is soothing to the bowel, so it can help alleviate some of that leakiness in the gut and get the bowel functioning properly as well. But yeah, that's a, that's a great approach to it. And, and ruteri is one of those really important keystone species that is almost eliminated from the Western population. We have almost no ruteri in our system at all. Uh, and it's very high in prevalence when you look at hunter-gatherer tribes like Papua New Guinea tribes and the Hadza tribe and so on. So that's one of those organisms, I think, that has uh, suffered through, you know, industrialization and overuse of antibiotics and all that. And we've knocked it out of our system to a certain degree. 
If you enjoyed that clip, you're going to want to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. Adding spores to a gut microbiome in three weeks increased the diversity of the gut microbiome by almost 25 to 30%. And it increased the growth of keystone species and it brought down pathogens. So the spores are like the police or the orchestrator.